everybody, Digger coming at you with a kind of, sort of, maybe another update, not really, but just got up here to the shop, it's definitely going to be a hot one today, but uh, I also kind of realized that I haven't been showing you how I'm doing things or why I'm doing things and everything, so this video is going to kind of catch everybody up a little bit on why and what I've been doing, if that makes any sense. All right, so right here I wanted to show you guys how or why I do my seat frames the way I do. Get this stuff out of the way. And when I say I put the seats in, basically what all that means is I put the framework in. This is the base for the seats, but these are not technically the seats. So you can kind of see how I've done this stuff. But basically all it is is a piece of OSB, 13 inches tall, and uh, I put a two by two across the top and the bottom, and uh, that is what makes my walls. And then I go back and I put in these little cross beams, and the smart thing is to put them right there. That way you can run a screw in and a screw in, uh, or you can you can turn these into uh, lift up uh, storage hatches or whatever you want. But that is how and why I do the walls the way I do. And let me, let me pull this part off real quick. Stop recording. So back here, the very first thing I did was made this little wall here. And it's made the same way. It's 13 inches tall, OSB, with uh, a two by two at the top and another one at the bottom. And then I do the sides and connect this through to this. That way those are all one piece. And then this piece obviously runs down the the length of my seats so basically what that does is that makes it uh, very sturdy uh, if you've ever experienced uh, building a waterbed that's kind of where I got the ideas for this stop recording so obviously you can see that uh, the the tops up here all that is is these are uh, more OSB and they're 24 inches wide. Um, basically, it was just taking a 4x8 sheet and cutting it in half. And that gives you the top parts, which you can tell are not mounted down yet. But they will get mounted down, and then all the seat pads will be made to sit on top of these. And then, you know, drake holders in the back, uh, the seat, seat backs go up in here, and then I'll put some... Uh, uh, some of my secret sauce probably on some brown board uh, masonite and uh, put that up in there that way that looks cool obviously we still got some walls to build but I wanted to catch up on telling you guys what and how and why I'm doing what I'm doing if anybody has any questions at all feel free to either drop me a text or uh, post the question right on here anything you need to see or whatever let me know we have not gotten into the wiring on this bus yet, so I know that that's something that uh, quite a few people have contacted me about and everything, so I will be showing you guys how I wire everything and everything on this bus. Oh, and just so you guys saw this, this is where I notched out that little area right here so that they can get to the uh, emergency handles. So the seat backs will be coming up against this, but there'll be enough room to get up under there to do that. You have to keep those open. If it ever goes through inspection or whatever, they will test that out. So that's about it for right now. There is Bobby J. We're just opening up the garage door. So that's pretty much everything I've got for right now. So like I say, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to uh, either text me or post it in the comments below and uh, if it's something that I haven't done yet I'll be I'll definitely make you a video just for that but uh, and I do want to say hello to Caleb Caleb is in Hawaii he contacted me the other day you know just to say hey thanks for doing these videos I love to see that so if if anything I do helps you build your bus please post it and let me know uh, it does make me feel a lot better and it makes me feel like uh, 
these videos are worth doing because th there's no money in these videos. I do I do this just for you guys. So, uh, you know, I do appreciate each and every one of you, all my subscribers, and, you know, even anybody that's not subscribed. I don't know why you wouldn't be, but okay. <laughs> all right, everybody. I'm going to do something. I don't know what, but I can tell you that today is Thursday, and Wednesday, yesterday, I woke up in the morning and my lower back was hurting and it's still hurting right now. I think the getting out here on Monday and Tuesday doing all the work that I did and everything, I just, I'm 56 years old guys. I kind of overdid it a little bit. So I'm gonna try and take it a little bit easy today but still see what I can get done. So I guess I'll get off here and act like I'm doing something. <laughs> so we'll catch you all in a little bit. All right, back to the framework. Just to let you let you get an idea of how this is done. I say we've got the OSB, the two two by twos, top and bottom, and then you've got some cross runners here. And normally these I try to do no more than like 36 inches apart. That way, then when you bring this down, you got a good solid surface right there. Now the one thing you want to do is definitely make these heavy duty enough that you can stand or walk across them because this is a party bus. People are going to get crazy in these things. Doesn't matter what you do or anything like that. Once you get 14, 18 people with alcohol in them, it's it, people are going to stand on everything, crawl on everything. They're going to turn the stereos all the way up, not even caring about distortion or blowing your speakers or anything so that's why we build these as heavy duty as possible and then some more <laughs> because these things are just going to get the crap beat out of them so i just try to make them as heavy duty as i can make them put put up with everything that way it lasts a while because it's no fun if you got a party bus that after six months of runs it looks like it's wiped out so uh, if you look at uh, Wind Party Bus, which go back a couple years on my videos, you'll see a bus that I built back in 2015 for uh, Wind Transportation. He's still running the bus here in the Dayton area, and uh, it still looks fantastic. So it just depends on how it's built and how you take care of it as to how well it's going to hold up. But we're trying to make these as heavy duty as possible. So that's what we got for today, for right now. We'll catch you in a little bit. Stop recording. So then, my benches are actually strong enough to walk all over. Well, there was a little other little thing that I did. See those little plus signs? I have marked all of my cup holders every 24 inches apart we've got a place for a cup holder the one thing you have to do though is make sure that there's nothing below it like this right here you don't want to put a cup holder right there so just make sure everything's all good and clear before you uh, go drilling any holes so as of right now I've got I've got it marked off for 15 cup holders but uh this little uh this little foldable seat thing up in the front i'll have a couple more up in there that way if there is somebody up here in a wheelchair they've got a place to put their stuff so okay everybody <sighs> finally got a haircut yesterday that feels a little bit better all right on to the next i hate when this happens <clears throat> my tape measure went limp that's what she said don't step on your tape measures, guys. <laughs> and another thing I did, I did put the floor down. And you guys will see a little bit of a gap down here. You know, down here in the uh, thing. But that honestly does not make a difference because the thickness of the carpet that I'm putting up here, plus a baseboard trim across here, and that's going to come out to like right there. So nobody's going to see that little gap there. 
same thing with this one down the middle once I put the flooring in over top of that and everything that little half inch gap is not going to be any big deal so the important thing was just to get it floored that way you know everything is nice and solid so and up here I actually did this if you can tell this part right here is a little bit on an angle so you can tell I kind of slivered in a little piece right there so once I floor this and everything there's gonna be a transition strip right through here because this section up here we have to keep this floor just because of the wheelchair tie downs and also you know you've got this e-track up here at the top that I don't know how it all works I've never strapped down a wheelchair but I guess you need all that stuff so that's why we're doing that the way we are and down in here you can kind of see I got a screw right here I gotta finish running in but that's kind of how we do things and why we do things and all that kind of crazy stuff I'll get to the ceiling eventually but for right now it's all about the framework TV did come in yesterday I didn't bring it up with me today because when my back feels I don't want to mess with that today <laughs> so uh, we'll get to that like I say right now we're just gonna kind of see what we can do without hurting ourselves anymore mm -hmm. so that's about it for right now so if I see anything else I'll put it on video all right so Bobby J just came back here to inform me that uh, they just announced on the radio some kind of big tornado warning or whatever coming in the next 20 minutes so as hot as it is I'm gonna go ahead and pack all this up I'm gonna give my lower back a rest Whew. it's hot out here but let me see if there's anything else I need to show you well we got this I don't know if I showed you that or not but that's gonna be we're gonna trim that one back a little bit like I just did these over here and uh, there's probably gonna be a little flip up seat action going on right there but we'll see we shall see Phew. it's a hot one out here people all right we're gonna call that one a day it's almost three o'clock it's hot tornado coming i'm out of here <laughs> we'll catch you all on the flip side remember party starts here have a happy day everybody digger is out And hey, YouTubers, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button, maybe even that little ding ding bell thing. That way you get updated and you know what's going on right after I do it. So uh, tune in. There's more to come. Party starts here.